This is part two of the bike wheel project. Part one was just an overview of the entire project. Part two will explain how to make the hub and spokes of the wheel. We will be focusing only on the front wheel in this part and later on do the rear wheel. A later video will focus on making the rim and the axle that passes through the hub. And as mentioned, another video will focus on features that distinguish the rear wheel from the front wheel. To begin this project, please start with a provided starter file. You can save it under another name if you like, but do not start this project on a clean sheet of paper, in other words, a brand new file. This is because the starter file provides for you several layout sketches and planes that you will be needing. The starter file includes two configurations, one from, for the front wheel and one for the rear wheel. We will be focusing on the front wheel for most of this tutorial, but I'll show you a few features of the rear wheel layout sketches before we begin. Some of the layout sketches will change a little bit depending on which configuration is chosen as we will see in a moment. Let's roll back to the beginning and see what the layout sketches look like. The first layout sketch is a cross section of one half of the hub on the right plane. A completed hub consists of an outer shell which includes an area that covers the axle, flanges into which the spokes are anchored, and an area that covers the internal bearings. Included in the hub are a spacer and also some lock nuts and bearing components and an axle that passes through the entire hub shell. All of these features are depicted in this layout sketch except for the area of the shell that covers over the bearings. This has been placed into a separate sketch because it's different depending on whether we're talking about the front or the rear wheel. If I roll forward one step, we'll see that area of the hub shell in this added on sketch which covers over this bearing and spacer area. So these two sketches together represent the axle passing through the hub, the flanges, the shell covering the axle area and the portion of the shell that covers the bearings. And it also includes the spacers and lock nuts and stuff that we are going to make a simplified representation of. When the front wheel configuration is active, the axle has a total length of 140 millimeters and the distance between the spacers is 100 millimeters to fit between the dropouts of the fork. When the rear wheel configuration is activated, the axle is lengthened to 165 millimeters and the spacing of the spacers is 120 millimeters for the rear dropouts. Unfortunately, this still says fork spacing in this case when it should really say rear dropouts. The flanges on the hub have a diameter of 65 millimeters. You can make this larger or smaller if you desire. A larger flange gives a heavier but stiffer wheel. A smaller flange gives a lighter but less stiff wheel. If you make a very large flange, you might want to add some lightning holes in the side of the flange. I'm going to roll this forward while we still have the rear wheel activated. Here's the bearing area for the front wheel. Here's a sketch that represents a sprocket and lock ring that would be added to a rear wheel. And this is a sketch which represents what the hub shape should look like in the bearing area for the rear wheel. We won't focus on this at all for this video, so I will keep these hidden and go back to the front wheel configuration that we will now be focusing exclusively on. Continuing to roll forward, we have a plane located on the outward facing flange 
of the left side flange and I'm calling this left side flange flange 1 because this is one we are going to build originally later on we're going to mirror it to this side which I will call flange 2. We also have a plane located on the inward facing side of flange 1. We also have a sketch which represents a typical cross section for the rim you'll have an opportunity to partially customize this when you make your wheel and a sketch which represents the total diameter of the outside of the rim and the inside of the rim. The outside of the rim is a fixed diameter but the inside is a diameter that you can change. The next sketch shows a layout for just two of the spokes and some of the spoke holes that go into the flange. This is a sketch we'll customize by adjusting the angle between the spokes depending on the total number of spokes you plan on having in your wheel. Currently the startup file is set so that the front wheel will yield 28 spokes total and the rear wheel will yield 36 spokes. The next sketch locates for us where the valve stem will be and this is important so that it occurs between sets of spokes. There's also a mating plane for the valve stem in this area, which we'll not discuss until we get to the assembly. And finally, we have a plane upon which an inward facing spoke will be drawn and a plane upon which an outward facing spoke will be drawn. We can finally start building our wheel. For now we will follow all the layout sketches and dimensions that have been provided to us. You can modify these later if you please. I'm now going to switch back to the completed wheel, roll back to step one, and then move forward one step at a time to demonstrate how this is constructed. Rolling back to step one, we are going to be building just one half of the hub shell area that will include the area that covers the axle and the flange, but we won't include the area that covers the bearings. You're going to do this by copying the appropriate lines from our hub cross-section layout sketch. I'm going to hide this sketch here. I'm going to roll this back before step one and demonstrate the process. On the right plane, start a new sketch. Let's view our sketches. What we want to do is copy this line, this line, this line, and this line into our new sketch. Using convert entities, Trim this excess away, add a new line at the origin, trim away any excess. Now many flanges blend into the axle area with a large fillet or some of them have more of a gentle spline like shape. So what I'm going to do is customize this a little bit by adding a spline here making a tangent here and here. So you often see bike hubs that look like this. And we will then, once we're happy with this sketch, go ahead and revolve it around this line. There's step number one feature. Step 2A and 2B are just to refine this a little bit by adding a chamfer to this side and a fillet to this side of the flange. The chamfer is good because later on when spokes are added they have to get around this corner a little bit to get out to the rim and you don't want them bearing down on a sharp edge. Steps 3 through 5 will be to add the spoke which emanates from the inside of the flange and goes out to the rim. This will be a swept circular profile. I'll roll forward to demonstrate how this is done. I'm going to hide most of my sketches and the ones I'm going to show are going to be the rim inner diameter sketch and the spoke layout sketch. 
spoke we are going to be drawing is this one here that emanates from the inside of the flange. We're going to be drawing the sketch for this on the flange one inward spoke plane. So starting a new sketch on this plane, I'm going to look at this from a top view. What I want is a spoke. It's going to start from the outside of the flange, but pass through the flange, and then the spoke, when it goes out to the rim, will emanate from the inside of the flange out to the rim. So what I'm going to do is draw a vertical line here and then a line that goes out into the vicinity of the rim. Pulling so we can see what's going on here. I want to make this end point coincident with this point on my hub. And out here, I'm going to add a sketch point. And I'm going to make a pierce relation between this sketch point and this inner diameter of the rim. This inner diameter of the rim is located on the front plane, which is the mirror plane of the entire wheel. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a one millimeter dimension from the sketch point to the end of the spoke. This will guarantee that the spoke looks like it's going into the rim rather than just going up to the surface. Finally, I want to add radius here for where the bend in the spoke will be. I'm going to make this one and a quarter millimeters what I want to do is make the tangent of this bend occur right where the spoke emanates from the inside face of the flange. To do this, I will make a relation between this point and the flange inward face plane. So I'll just pre-select both of those, holding my control key and hit coincident. Let's just take a look at this from a top view. I'm going to hide my relations and we can see the spoke starts on the outside of the flange but pops out of the flange on the inside. This point is coincident with the inside of the flange and the spoke goes out to the rim, out on the front plane and goes past the rim by a distance of one millimeter and it has a sketch point coincident with the path which is also pierced to the inside diameter of the rim. This completes the path for our spoke sweep. Step four is going to be to add the circular profile for the sweep. What we're going to do is draw on the outer flange face a circle that will be pierced to this path. So on the flange outward face we will start a new sketch, draw a circle, make it a diameter of two millimeters, and pierce the center of the circle to the path we just created. That completes step four. Step five then is just simply sweeping these two items. Selecting sweep, we'll choose this circle as our profile, the path we already made, and here's a preview for our spoke. So now we have a hub, and one spoke. Because we didn't bother to make a hole for this spoke and the spoke is merged to the hub, we don't see the spoke any longer.
on this outward face of the flange. Step six is going to be to add the round button that's at the end of the spoke that anchors the spoke into the flange. The button will actually be on the outward face of the flange even though the spoke is on the inward face. So the spoke passes through the flange and goes to the inside. I'm going to reshow my sketches. I want to draw a circular button, concentric, with this circle in the sketch. So on my flange outward face plane, new sketch, draw a circle, give it a diameter of four millimeters, go ahead and make this concentric to the circle, and then go ahead and extrude this to a depth of one half millimeter. That's step six and step seven is to add a 0.4 millimeter fillet to the edge of the button. Let's hide the sketches and see what we've got so far. You have the flange, we have the spoke entering the flange from the inside and we have the anchoring button on the outside face of the flange. This end of the spoke is bare at the moment and steps eight and nine are going to be to add the spoke nipple and the flats at this end of the spoke. For step eight, start a new sketch on this face of the spoke. Draw a new circle, give it a diameter of four millimeters, and make it concentric to the outer edge of the spoke, and extrude that to a distance of 10 millimeters. We're going to go in this direction and overlap the spoke. Step nine is to add the flats to the nipple. So we're going to draw a new sketch on this face here. Selecting the center rectangle option, drag out a rectangle and make the center of it concentric with this outer edge. Give a dimension of three millimeters and make these two sides equal to each other. Then take these four sides and offset them outward by about one millimeter. What we're going to be doing is extruding a cut that's going to take away these little crescent shaped sides of the cylinder. We'll extrude the cut depth of five millimeters giving us our flats and a little bit of extra leftover cylinder riding between the flats. These flats allow a wrench to be applied to the nipple in order to tension the spokes. This finally takes care of all of the features of the inner spoke. Steps 10 through 16, which are for the outer spoke, are similar to steps 3 through 9 for the inner spoke, with the main difference being that the path for the outer spoke is a little different from the path for the inner spoke. For this video, I will only focus on steps 10, 11, and 12, and leave you to do 13, 14, and 15, and 16 because they are almost identical to steps 6, 7, 8, and 9. So rolling back before our outer spoke, we'll start a new sketch on the flange one outward spoke plane. Making my sketches visible again looking at this from a top view, now what I want is a spoke which is going to start from the inside, but go to the flange to the outside, and then go back to the rim. So I'll just draw a line, which is vertical here, and angles back to the rim area here. Here I will make the line coincident with this point. 
and out here at the rim I will again add a sketch point which I will make a pierce relationship to the inner diameter of the rim and I will add a dimension of one millimeter. Going back to the flange area, I'm going to add my fillet. And this time I want the tangent of the fillet to be coincident with the outside face of the flange. So pre-selecting flange one outward face. In this point I'll say coincident and I want to make sure that this point is coincident with the inward face of the flange. So inward face, this point coincident and let's take a look at this from a top view. Hide all of our sketches. Let's also hide our sketch relations. We can see now that this spoke starts from the inside flange that emanates from the flange at the outside and then angles backwards toward the rim. Now we can go ahead and make a sketch for the profile of this spoke on the inward flange. Let's turn our sketches back on. On the inward face plane, make a new sketch, draw a circle, two millimeters. We are going to pierce it to this path here that we just drew. That was step 11. And now step 12 will be to sweep this profile with this path. So we'll go ahead and do that. Here's our preview. There's our completed spoke. Here we can see that the spoke digs into the flange a little bit so we can alleviate that a little bit by increasing the radius of the path in this area. We're never going to be able to avoid a complete digging in of the spoke here because in real life on a wheel the spoke goes straight for a little while and then actually bends a little bit as it comes over the edge of the flange. We don't want to build that complicated a model so we'll just compromise a little bit maybe make this one and a quarter millimeter radius one and a half millimeters improve the situation a little bit perhaps one and three quarters now we'll notice here that these spokes cross each other but they do not actually touch on a real wheel they do touch and this is because when the spokes are laced, the outward facing spoke actually goes behind the inward spoke. And this causes them to have a slight bend and to be tightly pushed against each other. We don't want to build that complicated a model, so we're cheating a little bit by having the outward spoke stay in front of the inward spoke. Step 13 is to add the spoke button for the outside spoke. This time the button will go on the inner flange. Step 14 is the fillet that goes on the button. And steps 15 and 16 are the features for the nipple.